Well, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to today's session on Gale Digital Scholar Lab. Uh, my name is Kevin Gunn. Um, I'm the coordinator of digital scholarship at Catholic University of America Libraries. I'm joined by my colleague, Michaela Champion, one of our graduate library pre-professionals who will be monitoring the chat for any questions. So feel free to put questions in uh, as we go along. Uh, this workshop is being recorded and will be made available uh, at a later date, along with the slides. So uh, today uh, we're going to be exploring the Gale Digital Scholar Lab. And I should point out right away, um, as with sometimes working with databases and electronic material and platforms and all that, sometimes things don't work when you want them to. So um, I was exploring uh, the Scholar Lab this morning and I was not able to get into my account. So I got, I got people working on it, but right now uh, I'm just gonna give you an overview of the lab. And they do have a lot of wonderful um, uh, hand, uh, hand, uh, handouts and videos and that to help one of the nice features. Um, if you want a more extensive view for analysis, let me just put this here. I'm sharing with you the um, recording that we did in April. Um, the platforms changed very slightly, but it is still useful. So I'm putting that into the plat uh, into the chat. So if you want to take a look at that, it'll give you a much more extensive feature and that sort of thing. So just to give you an idea um, uh, of what we're going on here. Um, so let me start with what we're going to be doing. Uh, let's go to the next one here. So um, just before, uh, before we get started, I just want to say a special thank you to Dr. Sarah Ketchley from Gale uh, Digital Scholar Lab. She's been given us permission to use a number of these slides for today's presentation. Uh, one of the nice features of the lab is that there's a robust support for researchers, and I'm going to show you some of that. So um, this will still be a useful webinar. Um, if you have any specific questions, uh, you can reach out to me. You can also reach out to Sarah. Um, her contact information is up on the lab. So you, you do have a lot of uh, support uh, moving forward. Uh, so I mentioned that, you know, CUA librarians are uh, will help you build your expertise in the lab moving forward. So, all right, uh, let's take care of that. So we'll just do um, a very over, quick overview of the lab. Um, um, like I said, I've got a little, uh, slide, uh, series of slides to show you, talk about the features of the lab. Then I want to do a quick exploration of the lab, um, and hopefully discuss some of the components of uh, the digital scholar uh, scholarship workflow. Okay, so the lab was designed for faculty and students to begin doing research in text mining. So the lab is uh, conversions of thousands of documents, uh, text mining techniques, and the best practices in digital humanities, bringing it all together. The advantage of the lab is that it saves the researcher time in uh, collecting documents. And I can tell you that sometimes a very arduous and time consuming task, you know, how to be, Another problem is how to do basic text analysis without having to learn uh, program coding or using the command line of your computer. The lab will show you uh, what you need to consider when doing text mining uh, in the digital humanities. So um, like one of the nice things here, it is um, cloud-based, so you don't have to download anything onto your computer. Um, you have uh, a lot of the content from the Gale primary sources that we Catholic University of America libraries have purchased. And I'll show you a quick list of those of what you can, you are able to text mine. There's uh, six different open source tools for text analysis. And I'll get into that in a minute. You have an integrated learning center. So again, it's very much a platform where if you're not too sure about something, there is some helpful documents and videos that you can watch in order to uh, move, move forward. So you're not left in the lurch about confused about what's happening. Uh, the text cleaning again is integrated into the platform. Um, the main uh, document type is text.txt. Uh, so if you're using any OCR material, you have to convert to TXT in order to load it up. So that's 
uh, something to consider. And then uh, also, once you've done all the um, uh, text analysis, the open source tools and that, they do have, um, you can download these visualizations, the statistical data, the content sets that you build in your session for use um, with outside tools. So one of the nice things I like is that you don't, you're not committed to using the Gale Digital Scholar Lab from beginning to end. You can take out the documentation. You can uh, come in and only use part of it. So for example, you could use it just for cleaning, uh, uh, cleaning your, docu your documents um, so that they're ready for text analysis and then um, export them out of the Gale platform uh, into some other uh, tool to use. So there's a lot of versatility there, which I really like. So here's what um, what they have. They've got the primary sources, and as you can see, here's a really nasty picture of a uh, of a micro a micro form, probably fish of a newspaper. You know, it was um, uh, scanned decades ago. So they've got that. They've got they convert it into the raw OCR text, and I should mention um, when they do convert the raw. Uh, convert it to, to the OCR. They tell you how confident they are in in that um, in, uh, in that scanning. So if you get in the 90s, then you're going to have very few errors. If it's further down in the 70s or 60s, um, you're going to you're, you're going. To, it is worthwhile to check that document for errors moving forward. So it's wonderful. It's very transparent moving through the process of what you, what what documents you're looking at and how you are preparing them for tax analysis. So once you got OCR up to a, a you know a respectable uh, percentage, uh, you can start working with it and you can do statistical outputs of various kinds. Uh, they have six major platform um, major tools that you can use to do that. And then from there you can do a visual output. So here's a word cloud for example uh, that you can do. So you have a number of platform features. Uh, so you can upload plain text documents for content, set, building, cleaning, analysis. Uh, you can manually enter uh, the document text and, and metadata if you want. So uh, you can literally type it in. You can also um, um, cut and paste, if you will, if you're coming from another uh, source. Um, you can create metadata so you can manage your uh, uh, your your documents properly, and you can also create mixed content sense with uh, with Gale data and run th that through the lab clean analysis pipeline. So you can bring your own text documents in, combine them with what you find in the Gale platform uh, in our available data sets that COA has, and then create a good data set and from there search. So uh, you do have quite a bit of versatility. So you're able to upload your user content. It's usually, uh, uh, the limit is 10 megabytes at one time, and you can upload multiple 10 megabyte blocks. So it's not like, um, uh, you don't have an upper limit, generally speaking. Um, generally, they have uh, the vast majority of people doing the prod, uh, doing the research, and that uh, um, are able to do it without any problems, uh, with re regardless of the size of your ultimate data set. They do have to be in TXT format. You can add your own content, build data sets with it, uh, clean the data set, and analyze it. So if you're working on a project uh, where you just uh, needed the data set cleaned, you can do just that. So you can combine your set with Gale sets and there and there are Gale primary source components available. So, right. so they do have um, sample prod uh, projects that you can work with. Uh, if you just, if you're not, you don't have something in mind, but you just want to explore it, you can go in and play with what the, what they have available and you can get a feel for the platform before you dive into your own project. So um, it's quite um, quite helpful in that sense. Um, they list uh, sample projects. So they have like uh, in any digital um, scholarship humanities project, you want you 
you want to have a research question. So you want to uh, begin seeing what you uh, um, possibly find. And then you want to look at, you know, gathering those documents and then using them to analyze them and, and get visualizations out of them. So, um, so you can, you can add your sample project contents to the, your, my content sets page and, and further uh, do research in that regard. All right, so um, here's an overview of the process, um, sort of like the big picture, where are you going with this? So there is a, a, a workflow to this. So if you, you're interested in doing something from beginning to end, this is basically the good way to do about uh, to go about it. So you begin with a research question, then you know that usually leads to other research questions, and then very much it, it's very much a reiterative process. So the process is cyclical and will take more of your time uh, before you get to interpret your results. So um, you do have to invest um, time in processing and looking at your documents. So when you're building, you're refining uh, your attributes of the documents you want to evaluate. Uh, you wanna look at the results, evaluate them, and if necessary, redo the search. So you can examine the OCR results and if necessary, exclude some documents that have poor OCR or if you want to uh, uh, clean up the OCR, uh, you can do that. And that, that would be the next step, cleaning. So you uh, clean OCR and, and go through that process as well. And then, you know, once you've got a, a, a clean data set, you can analyze it using the tech uh, techniques uh, uh, I'll describe it in a minute. So it's important to look at the complete picture of your research project. So for example, if you're examining the works of Jane Austen, a research question could be, you know, how often uh, do the words love and Mr. appear in the same sentence? So if you're thinking about doing something like that, then probably one of the tools you want to focus on would be the n-gram method, uh, the tool to answer that. So if you're interested in how the word love is used in a negative way, um, to contrast, uh, then sentiment analysis would be the proper method to go. So you have to put a little bit of thought in looking at this. So I've mentioned the uh, tools that you can use here. So uh, there's main six main tools. They hope to add some more in the future, but here they are. These are the outputs that you can work with. Uh, these techniques have been around a while and are great entry points for new researchers uh, who want to get started in text mining. You know, uh, teachers who want to teach these te techniques to their students. Um, this is a good place to start. And for students who are, you know, dipping their toes into digital scholarship uh, for the first time, uh, th these are very useful tools to begin with. So you can, they're divided into two broad categories, quantitative analysis and qualitative analysis. So you can look at something like, um, uh, you know, parts, uh, parts of speech, uh, engrams, um, you know, you're, you're counting stuff. So engrams, you know, how many times the word is present, you know, does it collate with other words, et cetera. Uh, you have parts of speech, uh, they're analyzed, uh, through tagging, um, you have named act, uh, entity recognition. You know how often a name is mentioned and where is it in the text. So you have these uh, sort of tools that you can use. With uh, regards to qualitative analysis, you're looking at sentiment analysis. So you can examine, you know, a negative or positive words um, that are present, and there's process of how to set set that up. Uh, there's clustering, so that allows you, you to bring uh, your st statistical knowledge to analyzing the document set. So um, that can be quite helpful. You also have um, topic modeling that allows users to lump up all the words in a data set you know, into a list of, set of 10 or so general topics, you know, to understand what the document or data set is about. And then it will tell you the most common topics that are mentioned in there. So there's extensive literatures on each of these methods and your research will probably use a number uh, a number of these methods. All right.
So one thing to think about is when you're looking at this, uh, you know, um, for teachers especially, uh, you, developing, uh, you know, DH literacies in the digital humanities classroom, I, I think something's important is going to be moving forward, uh, moving forward. So you have this general overview. Uh, they have different modules that teachers can use to help students um, process um, go about working on a digital humanities project. So everything from orientation to planning to collecting the data, curating it, you know, analyzing it, and then the final product coming out. So that's something that is quite useful. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is uh, we're gonna do a quick demo here. And here we are. I'm going to come to our main website here. Um, let's see. So here we are, uh, libraries.catholic.edu. And what you want to do is you want to go under research help right here. And you want to go to Day uh, Gale Digital Scholar Lab. So here's our page, and you can click on lab. <laughs> yes, you are most annoying. So one of the problems we've had is that we're going to have a little trouble logging in right now. I'm going to show you something here. So you have login, create an account. Um, normally, I would have you log in, but unfortunately, it's hanging up. It's trying to get you to set up a workspace, and unfortunately, um, it hangs up. It doesn't work um, right now, which is sad because it was working fine back in the spring. So um, I've got my people working on it, and hopefully that will be resolved. In the meantime, um, I can show you some of the great points about this platform moving forward. So I think the first thing to do is that it walks you through the process here. You'll know if you are logged in, I should mention up in the right hand corner, it will have your name listed and then you'll know that you're in. So going through here, it, talk, it walks you through building your content, your cleaning, your analyzing, um, and that. Um, if you go down to what uh, texts are available, I'm going to click on see the available archives. So um, first thing, what is it that you have access to? Uh, it's kind of important. Uh, we have a lot of Gale products, but not all of them are in the lab. And that's very important uh, to appreciate. So here's what we subscribe to. So there's what's available, there's and then there's what's uh, of um, what we subscribe to. Um, they are working on getting um, products into the Gale Digital Scholar Lab, and once they do that, then we would have to turn around and subscribe, get a subscription to those as well. So. So if you're doing uh, research in any of these areas, uh, American f fiction, you know, Latin American Caribbean studies, uh, archives, uh, unbound, ton of stuff in there. Uh, all a lot of this material, 18th century collections is great. 19th century collections is great. There's still a lot of stuff in here. Uh, 19th century uh, U.S. newspapers can be uh, very useful. If you are looking at political extremism, that's great. Um, I love the databases um, that have, you know, that cover like 400 years of material. So um, qu quite a bit, uh, as you can see from these uh, collections here of what we have. So it's good to take a look at what we have here, uh, the Times Digital Archive. So you got a lot of major newspapers that you can do search uh, searches on if that's if that's where you're heading um us declassified documents and as well as women's studies archive are examples of that so again 
you know, if once you're aware that they, um, Gail has these uh, particular project uh, um, database and that you're able to use digital scholarship platform, lab platform for it, uh, then you can um, see what's available in there. What are the limitations, that sort of thing. Then you can bring your own documentation with that, your own documents and combine them. So that's one way to, uh, to think about a lot of these um, uh, data sets is a good place to start. That may be the only place you need to go to, which is great, but quite often you do have to bring in other materials. So I just wanted to show that to you. What are you working with? Always good. All right, so when you're looking at this, your first thing you wanna do is you wanna build your data set. So let me click on this. And as I mentioned, they have a um, quick overview of the, uh, of, uh, of the process. Here you're building your set. So you gotta go out and see what exactly is in uh, the lab that you can search in that. So they have um, these particular uh, pages here. So you have, um, you can, they teach you sort of like how, what to search and how to search. So you're gonna be using Boolean uh, searching here. So you can't get away from it, sorry, <laughs> but that that's it. So you're gonna have to spend some time searching. So I hope your searching skills are quite good because <laughs> if they're not, um, if you're not able to interpret what you're seeing when it comes back, then it could be kind of complicated. Let's see. So here's the advanced search field, and you can uh, combine a lot of the fields and that to find material. And I'm going to scroll down here. There you go. So you have a sense here um, when you're searching you know, all the different types of limiters that you can use. Um, you know, the public, the publication section, the types, maybe you just want something for a particular state or province. Um, you can limit by publication years, that sort of thing. So it's very much like traditional um, searching in a library database. Um, you do have to know how to limit uh, your search so you, you get meaningful results. Um, So if we looked at the results, so here's a typical page. When you search, this is what you'll get. You'll get uh, the title on the side here. You'll notice lots of information coming at you. Love it. What's the OCR percentage here for the first one? Pineapple proliferation, maybe a horror movie, right? Anyway, 81% is listed here. It tells you where's the documents coming from, uh, the year, um, and it has breakdown here. So. If, once you scroll through here and you start looking at some of this material, oh, like 62, 63%, um, you can also limit filter your research here. So you can just look at, well, I just want to look at a particular uh, title, like the Times, for example. So you can just restrict your search that way. Um, so a lot of different ways that you can uh, um, examine what you're doing. All right, let's here. So another way you can look at it, you can look at, so you get a result, right? So we had the pineapple proliferation. I'm not too sure if that's one I want to include in my, uh, my data set that I'm building. I can always click on it and it will show me all this here listed and it'll even show me the source of where it is. So here's the source, it's how outline, outline in blue here. And then on the right, you have 62%. So you can read this and you can go through, well, it reads quite well. There may be a few uh, typos and that sort of thing in there. So here's one is very expensive with a hyphen and then a space. So there's little things like that you have to be aware of, um, but you can go in and change it and save it at that point. So you have a lot of versatility in that regard. So once you've you've cleaned it up a bit, so that's that. All right. Uh, let's see. 
There we go. So once you have you know your list here, you can put in. Um, you can start combining what you what you have, and you can upload what you have to to the data set uh, to your data set that you're building. All right, so let's go back to here. So that's building a content set. Um, so if you want to look at uh, cleaning your text, we can go into here. Go and again, nice for overview. It'll show you um, how to clean a, uh, how to go about cleaning a configuration and what's involved with that. Let's see if this will work here. Yeah, so some of the images aren't working properly. That's okay. What we can do here is I will play with this. page from the navigation. So just to give you an idea here, I'm not going to play the entire video. I just want to show you that you have uh, a number of options here. So you have stop words that you can put in that you don't want to include in your analysis. So that's always a useful tool uh, to have. Um, they have text correct uh, correction options here. So removing all extended ASCII char characters, that sort of thing, and a whole bunch of uh, special characters as well. So here's another one here, punctuation, um, spacing, you know, getting rid of white spaces is always a major problem when you're cleaning a data set. Uh, you want to get rid of line breaks. When you're downloading a data set from another source or whatever, um, you know, they'll always have the, the titles, the headings, the chapters, that sort of thing. So you can remove all that sort of front end material, title page and all that. So that's very helpful in, in working on that. And there's a lot of stuff here. You can go in and under replacements. So um, if you see a common error uh, that's being made, the OCR is consistent. Even when it's wrong, it's consistent. So if you have a tilde with an R, that, that could mean a particular letter like T. So if you go through and take a look and say, oh yeah, it's always going to be a T here, then you can do a quick search using tilde R and then replace it with a T. And, and uh, that's a, another quick way that you can uh, uh, clean up your data set. So that is a lot of the, uh, ways you can do that. Replacements, stop words, and then at that point, you want to name and save the, uh, the cleaning configuration. All right. So at this point, come back, back to our main page here. And at this point, once you clean up your data set, you want to go in, you want to take a look at analyzing. So you want to select the right tool. I'm going to click on that. And it'll walk you through uh, the various uh, points that you have here. So here's setting up and running. Let's see, put into there. There we go. So this is what the page will look like when you're analyzing it. You have a list of these options here. Uh, it will tell you, um, you know, um, you will have to upload um, your data, your data set, then you'll run it. And sometimes the runtime will be like a few seconds. Sometimes if it's a larger uh, data set, then it will take a few minutes, several minutes, in fact. So you always want to make sure um, that you are uh, um, that you are, um, uh, uh, that you do provide enough time for it. And I will tell you right now, um, you can run that set, look at the results and go, well, that's really weird or that's just plain out wrong in that. So then you're gonna have to clean it up and then clean up your set for whatever reason and then go back and redo it. So it is very much an iterative process and you should be very, um, critical about what results you have coming moving forward um so i 
I have lots of advice on this area, <laughs> but I want you uh, to be aware of that. So, so that is running the analysis and it'll walk you through um, the process here. You can also configure tools. It's not gonna let me do that before going moving forward. So let's see, document clustering. So on each page here, so you want to know what is document clustering, that sort of thing. It gives you an overview. Uh, it tells you more where you can figure out um, how to do that. So they're using the SkyKit learning documentation here. So it leads to more uh, information that you can use to learn about it before you commit to doing that particular, uh, using that particular um, tool. Um, here they talk about you know, k-means and a common way of looking at clustering and that sort of thing. So they use established statistical methods. So it's not going to be something weird um, that you're going to be using. Uh, it'll be something that you, that will guide you through the process. Uh, let's see, if you want to look at sentiment analysis, again, here, you want to take a look at this. Um, They've at recently added uh, the um, a particular um, standard called the AFIN um, here, and that helps you. Um, it what it is is a list of words, and it tells you whether they're positive word, it's a negative word, or it's a neutral word. So there is scholarly standards if you're doing a sentiment analysis in that. I should mention uh, Sarah Ketchley will be doing a. Um, workshop on sentiment analysis on October 30th. So do stay tuned for that if you want to, uh, if you want to uh, go into a deeper uh, dive on that. So, all right. And I think I'm going to step right back here. All right, so here we are, we're back to our main page again. And you can look at you know, this, you can tr also try out um, sample projects listed here. And like I said, they'll walk you through the process. You, you're not feel like you're lost. Um, so you can take a look at these. You can even get, uh, once you log in, you can get, excuse me, a copy of the content set. So you can explore that as well. Um, it gives you an overview, you know, you can ask, you know, what is the questions that you're asking with regards to your research uh, topic? You know, so that's something to consider. It tells you how to build, how to clean and analyze, and then finally how to interpret what you're getting. So um, what can I say? The platform is very useful. Um, there are curriculum materials listed here. For those uh, faculty who want to get started on something, you even have sample syllabi that you can use uh, moving forward. So a lot of great material here. So let me move back here. So that's the Learning Center. Now we're back to our main page. And that is basically an overview of the entire process. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute and ask, or you can use the chat, whatever works for you. Let's see. Let's see. So I'm showing here, um, like I said, or had one of the. Uh, uh, we did a project back in the spring, so you can use, uh, you can always go in and take a look at this one, the UR, 
URL is here, and I'm going to put that into the uh, chat here. Let's see. Let's see, there we go. There you go. All right. So uh, if there are not any questions, um, thank you for coming out. And I am available for uh, research consultations. My email is gun, G-U-N-N, -N, at C-U-A dot E-D-U. So uh, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>